Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. Now, a couple of people have been asking me to give them an idea of how much it will cost for a basic setup. But there are many questions. One person in the community, and thanks, I think it was Alfonso, he asked me, he wants something that's not too expensive, but, you know, in case he's not interested in it, but he wants something strong enough to be able to get on the moon and to even look at stars. This is just an example. Of course, there are many models, right? And I don't know all about all of the models, but I know this is my Celestron Astromaster 70 millimeter telescope. It's also a day scope, so you could look at uh, never pointing to the sky, to the sun. Absolutely, and I think it's important for those who don't know, you never look at the sun. And if you're using this outside during the, the day, don't just go under the sun. Go against the sun, or don't use it at all if it's a sunny, too much of a sunny day. You don't want to point this if you're using an eyepiece. When you have a camera at the end of this, to film it, and I'm going to explain all that in the video too. When you have a camera at the end of this and you want to film um, the moon, the camera's going to sit here. It's I have an X-Image 5. I'll show you guys that too and how to set it up. It's real simple. You're going to need a laptop outside. And we're going to talk about setups. Um, maximum $1,000, maybe $1,200 once we get into the 4-inch scope with the cameras. But it's very interesting and you'll see that you can do a lot of substituting because some people say they don't have the money. I get you. I totally get you. I'm not rich either. And I tell you, this, you don't even need an X-Image 5. If you have a, sem, uh, a phone, no matter what the, the make of the phone, I'm not going to talk about makes in this video. If you have a phone, when you buy the telescope, you could also order um, the rack that comes in the back to support. It will put the phone, your camera, up to the eyepiece. Well, after you take up the eyepiece and put it in front of the hole, you'll be able to take photos of the moon. With your camera, uh, with your telephone, if you know, if you want to substitute, if you don't have that three hundred dollars and you have like ten phones lying around, you can do that and wait till you get money to buy a, a solar imager. A solar imager isn't that expensive. I think it can go around. Um, you know, you can you can get one for two hundred and fifty to three hundred fifty Canadian dollars. Now here's the thing: I'm not, I don't know all of your currency uh, in the states for. Two hundred dollars, I guess, maybe two hundred and twenty-five solar imager, two fifty. Here it's about three hundred, three hundred fifty dollars for a good enough one. Uh, I have a five megapixel solar imager. Um, you know, there's one megapixels, there's two, three. It depends on what you want. You know, you want color and you want more contrast, of course, more definition. This Astromaster um, is a real good telescope, and I'm going to talk to you guys about the moving of the telescope. You see, the moon is always moving. So you always have to have a good notion of how the telescopes work. Sturdy surface, probably off of the surface that the telescope is on. Get on some other platform surface. You have to do a setup yourself and to be able to move this like that and follow the moon. So you're basically just always going up and down, but you have to always follow the moon too. So that's when you, if you're really into this doing telescope, you're not going to want uh, a telescope that does not have a remote. The remote is going to permit you to pan and guide all the time following the moon because trust me, with a telescope, even a 70 millimeter telescope, it moves real quickly. This Astromaster 70 millimeter telescope by Celestron, I bought it last year, it was on special, and I got it for 200, I think $225 with the tax. So in general, if it's not on special, $300, you'll be right on the money, give or take $20 Canadian currency, of course. So this scope is a $300 telescope. The end of this telescope, well, it's really not heavy, so I can even close it up really quickly and, you know, literally hold this with one hand. There's absolutely no weight to it. Give you an eye, a quick idea. This is, you know, the size of the three inch. It's three inches. This is a three inch telescope. I have a four inch telescope. Uh, I'll show you also the four inch telescope. Now, if you really like doing telescope, you are going, I suggest the four inch guys, definitely the four inch, but this takes amazing uh, photos and it uh, it's a good live view of the moon with it. And you know what? I have some Astro Master 70 millimeter footage of the moon that I got last year. 
We're going to take a look at that too later on in the video to give you an idea of what you can get for $300. But now here's the thing. If you want to film the moon, well, you're going to have to add the same price at least of what you paid. It would be another $300 if you want a solar imager. So, so long me, if you're in Canada anyways, for $600, tax included, you could have an AstroMaster, a solar imager at the back to record everything you're capturing at the same time and take the photos you want. Of course, all depends on the programs, all depends on your editing skills, because you can do a lot. When you see how close I got with the AstroMaster, 70 millimeter scope, you'll be really happy, I'm sure of it. I mean, with this, you're on the moon. You want to start a channel, and you want to show people what you're getting, and you're good at editing, you'll get views. And this will get you on the moon. You can see everything any other telescope is getting, but it's always the distance and the clarity. This has good contrast. It has good high definition photography when, when you want to make photos with it of the moon. Very, very good. Uh, I, I was impressed with the, the AstroMaster 70 millimeter. And again, we're going to go see um, some footage, some live footage of that right after I explain to you how it works. There's only two mechanisms. I'm not going to try to give you guys some tricks because these are wobbly, wobbly legs. They have small legs. It's not for nothing that the end of the feet have like daggers at the end of them so you can drive in the ground. You don't want to get your telescope dirty. Say to yourself, the bottom of your telescope has to be full of mud. Drive it in as far as you can in the ground and you'll get a lot of sturdiness. Every little thing you're going to do to get your uh, telescope sturdier, well, it's just going to help a lot more in your photography and a lot easier to see if you're live viewing the moon because the moon is always oscillating. So the least shake that you have the better you'll get a chance at seeing the details on the surface because it's not easy to see the details on the surface. So, in general, at one point, you'll see that the moon will sort of stay that you'll only have to use one of these mechanisms. There's two mechanisms to this uh, telescope, but you got to know how to use them because it's what's going to make the difference between good and bad footage. So obviously, turning clockwise locks this, and if you turn left, you will unlock it to be able to go up and down with it. There it is, up and down, up and down, and then you lock it. So obviously, as you're filming in general, that could be stayed left there. You see, it's not even locked and it still stays there. Leave this open, guys, leave it loose. It's not gonna break or anything. Your telescope is gonna fall down to here and that's about it, so you'll be okay. So here, this mechanism permits it to go front and back, and this mechanism, okay, here, it's just a turn, a simple half turn too. You don't have to screw it, just one turn will permit you to go left or right with the telescope. So as you are looking at the moon and it's going over to the right and you have to go up or down at the same time. So leave them both open and then you lock. So lock this one, lock this one, and then you film. And while you're filming, you're good for a minute and 20 seconds. Then you're gonna have to readjust, unlock again, move over, Get, go back up if it's going up, or go back down if it's going down. But I mean, hey, it's simple. Some are going to laugh at the video. I had no clue when I bought the first telescope, guys, and I really wanted to see someone touch a darn telescope, a simple telescope, a real video of what they look like and what we can do with it. The legs are not very sturdy on the telescope. Like I said, you're going to have to uh, ground that down because they're not heavy. But hey, it still works. It's just that if you have any wind during the day, it's Near impossible with these telescopes when it's windy, uh, if you're not on a solid surface to be able to see. This, gently, always gently, because it'll fall right out of the track. You roll back, of course, to um, zoom, uh, sorry, to get the focus. This is only for the focus. There's no zooming whatsoever here. You're just getting the focus by doing this to get whatever you're at in focus. Now, the fun thing, guys, is with the next image five, and we'll get to that right after this. The next image five is going to permit you to have a program and you will be able to zoom up thousands of times with this telescope or with any telescope you have because the program of an next image five has many possible zoom positions and it's really cool because telescopes do not come with zooms. So now I'm going to really take the time to show you guys what a next image five or any solar imager will look like behind the telescope. So you're going to carefully open up the screws without taking the screws out, just enough for the, the eyepiece to come out. Now, these are eyepieces that uh, I, I bought, but some come 
with the telescope. This one comes, sorry, this one does come with the telescope. Yeah. So your eyepiece is out. You're going to go put it away so that no dust gets in here immediately or a Ziploc bag, whatever you have to do to keep these clean. Because one speck could look like a planet and you don't want that. Next image five, very simple camera. I've showed it before, but we're gonna look at it in a bit more detail. You know, it's just a regular, simple camera here. So now we're gonna sit it inside of the Astromaster 70 millimeter telescope. So now you bought your telescope. So everything's fine and dandy and you're seeing things on the moon and you know, you can't take pictures because you don't have a camera at the back. So either use a phone, but I'll tell you, like if you don't wanna pay the 300 for this, you can pay 300 for your, your uh, scope and that's all it'll cost. You can use a phone, but you'll have to order a rack. It probably costs about 100 bucks. Other possibilities. Here, those are all possibilities I did not know that I had to find out myself. And trust me, no one was really helpful online. I was trying to find out some real info and everyone was trying to show off instead of talking serious price and exactly something about a basic telescope, which for some is more interesting than the big telescopes because I started off with this and you guys can too. Very simple guys. This goes at the back right here. So now it's in here. Once you plug that in right here, it's plugged in now. This is a regular USB plug. that's going to go plug inside of your computer. Now you will have already opened up your next image five and the program that is inside your next image five you will download it on your computer and you will see the power grid in front of you which is very simple all the zooms hd 1080p everything you need is right in front of you you can experiment with it by filming something outside a star or anything you want to start off with i suggest the moon but it's that simple and this entire kit right here next image five which is still a good camera not brand new, but it's what, a couple of years old? I think two years old. Here is a 100 millimeter need telescope. It is four and a half inches of a lens right here. Now this telescope, if you want to pay, like I said, in the four or 500 region, I think it's still in the four or 500 region. Look at the feet on this one. They're wider, right? So probably a bit more sturdy rubber on the feet you know all efforts for telescopes to go a bit better this one's pretty special there's no plug to it imagine just to give you an idea maybe you don't have access to a plug where you are or you want to do this away from the home without having to buy a power source right now well guys this turns on and you're ready to go you wait for the sound you're ready to go and you can move the telescope, you know, up and whatever. The battery takes a lot of juice, I'm telling you right now. But hey, it's a good telescope. You put the setup at the back, like I told you, with the next image five. So you're into it about seven, eight hundred dollars. So, like I said, you may as well go get the four inch that I have, almost five, same as four and a half inches, same thing, the um, SLT. That way you'll be able to get. Uh, closer because mine is 1200 millimeters. This is 100 millimeters, but you know what for photography very good, but need I don't know. I don't know much about it um, I Celestron is more expensive But a better guarantee and a better known type of telescope. So to each his own. I hope I help guys Guys these videos don't take me very long to do it's you know well actually <laughs> take me an hour or so but it's a pleasure and if you guys want to know more about anything that I have as a setup everything I have here I will post as data you know all my mistakes that I've done I'm gonna to try to share them with you along the way and this is footage from the Astromaster 70 millimeter telescope um, showing you that hey we're, we're gonna go see Plato crater we're gonna go see Aristarchus crater guys with the Astromaster 70 millimeter telescope we're gonna see um, maybe at one point I will make a video and show the comparisons because now we're getting a bit long it's up to 15 minutes we'll see the differences of what we can see and people aren't understanding it until you see them both side by side you'll understand there are thousands of details extra with the 14 inch that you can see around here but doesn't matter look where you're at we're 
over sinus iridum and you're with a 70 millimeter telescope and an X-Image 5 for under uh, $625. Look how close we're getting under uh, Mare Serenitatis to see the craters, to see. So, so if you use eyepieces, you know, you can uh, buy eyepieces and uh, you can get a Barlow. A Barlow is what magnifies you can get this for a hundred bucks, guys. It magnifies twice as much a magnification. So with this, the Next Image 5 Zoom programming software and the Barlow, you're right out there on the moon. But now, here's the thing. Um, if you get a 1200 millimeter telescope, you're not gonna be zooming at 1200 millimeters. Say to yourself that. So with a 100 millimeter telescope or a 70 millimeter telescope, if you're at full uh, zoom, on the telescope, and that will depend on your software, uh, you will, it gets blurrier and blurrier the closer you get. So you back out and you try to add the contrast and then you'll be able to zoom in more. Just experiment with it, guys. And I assure you, you will not have any regrets getting the Astromaster um, te telescope. But again, don't forget that if you really do know that you're gonna like this, go right away to at least a, f a four or $500 telescope and up, which is a four to five to six, uh, keep going up, it'll get, uh, if you're at six inches, it's close to $1,000 and, and maybe even $1,500, but you need a remote. And the minimum for that is at least five, $600, I think, telescope in the four, four to $600 range. You need it if you want to film the moon, because don't forget, with the Astromaster, you're not going to film the moon while you're following it, that's for sure. Impossible, because it's gonna, it's gonna jump. But it, you will be able to film the moon going by, and you'll, Get ahead of the moon, let it go by. Get ahead of the moon, let it go by. But as for filming and following a crater, impossible. You need a remote. I've been outside filming the moon, guys, um, all week. And I have to catch up on the emails. Forgive me. Bruce Schwartz, 75acommercial, gmail.com. And don't worry, I'll get to your emails. Is where you want to send your UFO videos. And I have some coming in. So the next video after the beginner setup, this one, we'll see some. UFO videos from community members. Mr. Larry Diggerson and Mr. Mike Leahy, thanks guys for the very generous donations and thanks for being a part of this community. Looking forward to see you guys around. Thanks again, everyone. Mr. Mark Bradley and Mr. Cameron McLean. Guys, I love you so much for the support. Thanks a lot for connecting with me and for being there. Thanks for the generous donations, guys.